The motivations to join the military have drastically changed over time, from World War II and the need for jobs, all the way up to the war on terrorism and the feeling of patriotism. Something drives our military personnel to serve our country. For my senior project, I decided to interview 10 military personnel from different stages in their careers to evaluate their differences in motivation and the similarities in their mindset. Here are their stories. Hello, could you please list your name and your previous job position in the military? Ken Coyles. My previous job, I had 33 years, so I had a lot of different jobs. <laughs> Started out as Miss Electronic Equipment Specialist on Titan IIs. Then I went to B-52s, electronics on those. Then I went to uh, B-2s, I worked avionics on those. Then I went to uh, electronics on A-10s. Then I was a first sergeant. Then I was a group superintendent. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Sanders, and I was a uh, uh, Air Force uh, pilot. Uh, my name is Laura Tattershall. I am a first lieutenant in the United States Air Force Reserve. I am a flight nurse with the 932nd Air Medical Evacuation Squadron. Willis, and I'm an all-source intelligence analyst. I am Cadet Second Class Noah P. Johnson. I'm currently at the United States Air Force Academy. Hi, my name is Phoenix Chad Leach, full shebang. Uh, I will be a photojournalist in the Air Force National Guard. My name is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Nathan Tinsley and I'm part of the Inspector General team. What year did you enlist into the military and what branch did you decide on? I decided on the Air Force because of some advice my dad gave me. He was in the Army and he said, go into the branch that will give you the most training. Find out what you want to do first. So that's the advice I give everybody that wants to go in the military figure out what you want to do, and then visit each branch, and whichever one offers you the most training or the most college credits in that area, that's the one you should look at joining. I want to do aircraft mechanic because my dad was a mechanic and I want to follow his footsteps. The Air Force gave me 11 months of electronics training when I first went in and some college credits, so I went into the Air Force. And that was July 21st, 1977. Commissioned in 1989, and I joined the Air Force. I commissioned in 2018 um, and decided on the Air Force mostly because the job focus I was looking at had that air vac unit um, and also my dad served in Vietnam in the Air Force so that was also part of my interest. So. I enlisted in 2018 and I'm in the United States Air Force. I entered the Air Force Academy in 2018. Uh, I'm a member, proud member of the Red Tag Bastard class of 2022. Um, I decided to join or decided to go to the Air Force Academy uh, for a um, couple of reasons uh, over the other ones or over the other the other academies. Uh, I'd say my biggest one is that I want to fly something fast and pointy. Uh, I want to put foreheads on forehead and, and have a good time. So um, it's a lot more fun than than trudging through the dirt and the mud and then like the Army and Marines and uh, getting stuck on a ship for however long in the Navy, so. I joined 2020 and the branch I decided to join was the Air Force. Uh, the reason for that being is just I, with the JROTC, I was like, you know what, Air Force values are already in me. Might as well just keep going with that. Plus, you know, luxury of the Air Force. I joined in 2017 in the Air Force Junior ROTC. What conflicts or wars were you involved in during your service? Cold War, and then I deployed during uh, the first Gulf War was B-52s, and then um, Operation Iraqi Freedom with A-10s, Operation Enduring Freedom with A-10s, and then I went as a civilian contractor I, on MQ-5Bs, which are hunters, UAVs, uh, with the Army, I deployed with them. I participated in Operation Southern Watch, and then uh, Operation uh, Enduring Freedom and uh, Iraqi Freedom. I have not so far. <laughs> Global war on terror is still going on. It has been since 2001, of course, but that's the only current conflict. I, I do not foresee myself being deployed anytime in the near future, no. Heck yeah. Um, so, with especially with the job that I have, um, I've, I've talked to my unit a couple of times and they say they get deployed quite a bit. So I'm like, all right, I'm ready. You know, wherever you want to send me, I'm down for that. 
Are you interested in joining the military in the future? And if so, which branch? I am, and I am getting ready to talk to a Missouri, er, Missouri Army National Guard recruiter. Do you have other family members who have also served in the military? My dad was in the Army. He worked on missiles. My uh, father-in-law was in the Army. My son is in the Army. He's a helicopter pilot. He actually outranks me. He's a major. Um, and that's all the immediate family that, that was in. Uh, of course, my great-grandfather did. My grandpa did. They were Army. My father served in the Air Force. and. I've got a uh, daughter who served in the Air Force as a pilot, and currently my son is a, uh, a weather forecaster for the Air Force. Yes, so my dad uh, enlisted in the 60s um, and served a tour in Vietnam um, in maintenance squadron. And so that was his experience for just the four years. He didn't re-enlist, but I'm speaking to him over time. Kind of, lots of good stories and piqued my interest. My grandfather was a military policeman in the Army. So, uh, like I said, uh, my great uncle, he was a, a flight surgeon in the Air Force. My uncle is, is still serving. He's, he's an officer in the Army. Um, I've got a, an, uh, another uncle who went Marines. Um, my grandpa was in the Army. Uh, I, think, I think that's it. Yeah. My great grandfather served. He was in World War II as a, I think, a scout for the army. I have many family members. Um, my closest is my dad. He served. He just retired out of the Navy, but he had prior service in the Marine Corps and the Navy. What was your motivation to join the military? Were there any external influences, or was it a mostly internal decision? Um, I did a year of college before I went in the military, and uh, I had to take out some some money for loan in that area so um, a recruiter came out and uh, we were just after Vietnam at that time so we weren't at war or anything and a recruiter was at the college and uh, mentioned how you could go to get your college for free in the military so I looked into it a little bit and that was my main drive getting in I thought I would do four years and get out you know after I got my degree but um, I wound up making a career out of it. Motivation to join was I wanted to be a pilot and I wanted to be a commercial pilot. And when I was, uh, when I got my private pilot's license in high school, it was very expensive. And uh, after I got that, I didn't know that I had to get a lot more flying hours to become a commercial pilot. So I couldn't afford it. And someone said, join the Air Force. You can fly for free and, uh, and log all the hours you want. So that was my motivation initially to get into the military was to build up my flying hours so I can be a commercial airline pilot. That's a combination of both. Um, for sure, in my civilian career um, in nursing, I've been doing about 11 years and was looking kind of for something more, um, something different, and that definitely fulfilled that piece. Plus, I was interested in the military aspect, had been for several years anyway, um, and then externally, um, the um, accession bonuses and the things that the they offered as far as financial peace play a big part as well as the intrinsic I guess motivation of I mean wanting to serve a country and do something be part of something bigger I would say that it was completely internal I don't think I had any external factors motivating me um, it's always pretty much been an internal thing one of my big motivators for going to the academy was uh, people told me that I wouldn't make it um, I was told that uh, you're from Southwest Missouri. You are, uh, they are looking for more diversity to include in, in, in the Air Force and in the military and specifically in the academies. So um, there's not really, you don't really have a chance. You might as well look at going to MSU or, or somewhere else. And, and while, that may be true or, or not true. That's that's uh, not my place to say. What I will say is that it it it, it was tough to get in here, and it was tough to cultivate the discipline I needed to um, uh, make the mark. There was also that motivation of 
uh, I didn't want to just be flipping burgers and, and pretty much, I didn't want to just stay in Republic, Missouri for the rest of my life. I wanted to, to get out and, and do something bigger than me, uh, bigger than, than all of my friends, bigger than everyone else. Uh, I wanted to do something that meant more to other people um, through my actions than just myself, if that makes sense. The influence there were there were multiple influences that 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 I had that pushed me towards coming here. Um, but what kind of what I was saying is that the biggest one, the 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 part of me that really was pushing to get here was my internal motivation um, because externally there wasn't really a whole lot of motivation, right? I mean you have people saying, nah, don't do it. It's not worth it. No, nah, it's not, it's too hard. And it's, you don't want to do that. Just go to MSU and live your life as a happy little kid in, in, in Missouri or whatever, you know, externally, I didn't really have any motivations um, other than maybe, you know, free school. That's, that's always nice. Um, but it, internally that intrinsic motivation, that, that is really what drove me to do the things that I did to get here. Um, to work as hard as I did to get here, because uh, if if it wasn't for that, I I don't think I I would have gotten here or still be here for that matter. So okay, this is gonna sound like a, a funny story. I mean, deep down inside, I always wanted to join, um, especially with the influence of my great grandfather. But what really just made me decide to just jump in and do it was one day I was just working at Price Cutter and like, you know what, I'm tired of this. And I'm still working on price cutter, but I don't know. I was like, I need a change of pace. So I was like, I called the recruiter. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I, I'm gonna join your air guard. And he's like, all right, well, here's what you do. I'm like, all right, checked off all the boxes and went to MEPS and got all that fun stuff done. It was kind of both. I've always wanted to join the military and I knew Air Force Junior ROTC would kind of give me that foot in the door. And um, also, um, my parents seen it, seen the unit on social media, and then they told me about it. So it's a little bit of both. Do you believe internal or external motivation is more important when serving in the military? I believe if you don't have some internal motivation, you won't enjoy it near as much. You know, that's why I tell people find out what you want to do first, and then uh, then when you know what you want to do, not what other people tell you to do, but when you know what you want to do and then see if the military is right for you. I will say both. Uh, you can, you know, they can balance out each other internally. I've seen internal uh, motivation low in individuals that's in the, uh, the military and they just don't want to do anything. And I've seen just the opposite where the motivation internally is uh, uh, strong in that one individual and they're very motivated to, to do something. Uh, external motivation, that can be anything from, hey, there's a war getting ready to break, break out in, in uh, Kuwait or Iraq, and that type of motivation is, you know, it's gonna help you also. Uh, so I think a little bit of both is gonna kinda keep you motivated uh, to, to, you know, help you out to maybe join the military or press through or we need to do? Um, internal for sure, because you can, external factors are always changing. Um, if you're motivated truly externally, you're never going to be completely fulfilled. So intrinsically being motivated is a big part. However, I do think external factors do weigh a lot with people with like healthcare benefits and retirement, things like that are definitely play a big role, but they're not going to be something that keeps people wanting to come back and be interested for a whole career's worth anyway. Initially, internal is more important because if it's something that you're going to make a career out of and you're going to serve for 20 years, then you're probably going to need a combination of both. But if it's something that you are you might only do one enlistment for, then I think internal motivation is going to get you through that, of course. Um, it's definitely a foundation for it, but if, like I said, if you're going to serve for a very long time, then external factors such as like leadership or benefits or your family, children, things like that, uh, those things will probably encourage you to stay in a lot longer.
Definitely internal. Um, uh, I'm going to keep this PG. Uh, uh, the, the amount of stuff that you deal with on a day-to-day basis, um, especially in this, in this COVID environment, is ridiculous. And a lot of it doesn't make sense. And it seems pointless. And there's a thousand reasons why uh, I'd rather do X, Y, and Z than what my chain of command is telling me to do. Um, and it's really tough sometimes to uh, figure out why I am still here and why I'm putting myself through the crap that uh, we go through on a day-to-day basis. And then I think to myself, okay, think about that kid that wanted to get in here. Think about that, that mentality you had when you were driving up the, the driving through Northgate, your first time here, you were getting ready for I day. You're terrified because you're wearing your, your shorts and your t-shirt and you get on that bus and then the guy's screaming at you and you get off the bus and the guys are screaming at you and you run to your squadron and the guys are screaming at you. And you, you, you remember all those, those hard times that you've been through, all those, all those difficulties that you've had, all the challenges you faced, and, and ec- there's nothing that you can get in extrinsic motivation that motivates you as much as that. Those, those internal things that you, you look back on and you say, wow, that stuff sucked. And if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't do it again. But having done it and having done it with the people I did it with and having succeeded and gotten as far as I have, I, I mean, if I can do that, there's no reason I can't graduate and become an officer. Like, it, if, you are, if you are relying solely on external motivation, like, oh, yeah, if you march perfectly at the next new meal formation, I will give you a sucker. Like if you rely purely on that, you will not get through anything. Um, but going back to internal and external motivation, it's all about that internal motivation. It, external means means nothing. I mean, I give you a sucker one day and you'd be completely bought in and then not give you a sucker the next day and you just hate everything and everyone. And those kind of people just, they don't, they don't, they don't make the cut, you know? I mean, they just... I don't want to, I don't want to say it like this, but they just don't belong. You know, you you can't have that level of cynicism and uh, selfishness, honestly, uh, and work cohesively as a unit and as, as, uh, as a team. So um, yeah, definitely internal motivation. Think uh, internal, because if you don't have it figured out in the mind of what you want to do or even why you're doing it, then it's not going to. Um, I feel like internal is more important because everyone can tell you, oh, hey, join the military, do this, do that, but it's really what you de- what you feel and what you decide is best for you. When faced with challenges and conflicts in the military, were the motivations that kept you fighting through them different from the motivations that moved you to enlist? Um, well, on my first hitch, uh, I got a bunch of you know, college and stuff. And then I uh, met a uh, girl and, and we got married. So my motivation to stay in after the first four years was because uh, I was married and we started having kids and it was a very secure job and, and I liked what I was doing. Uh, so I stayed in because of, you know, circumstances at the time. I never thought I would do 33 years in the military, not when I started. I would have bet my life against it. Yes. Uh, I told you I just joined the military so I could build up flying hours. I I knew I was going to be flying airplanes. I didn't really know what I wanted to do and uh, as far as what type of aircraft to fly. And then whenever uh, I graduated from officer training school and went through flight school at Vance Air Force Base, uh, I started off in a small twin engine jet plane that was not really fast but to me at the time it's super fast because I was used to flying system 152s and 
uh, I enjoyed kind of going fast as far as the speed is concerned and then we went to the advanced trainer the T38 which is a supersonic uh, uh, trainer used to train fighter pilots and I'm like Ooh, this is something I really enjoy uh, so my motivation changed a little bit uh, as far as their plane I wanted to fly and then uh, uh, when I first uh, deployed and to a different country and doing these, you know, I don't know, what you say, the experiences of uh, what I gained in that country, seeing how the other people lived, and then flying combat sorties, and then what I, and understanding what I was doing and why I was doing it, my motivations completely changed. It was not just focused on me, my motivations changed, it was mostly focused on why I was there, and why I was doing it for the country, and freedom of uh, the American people and you know just realizing that we have it pretty good here in the United States. Um, definitely. Um, there's been all kinds of things. It's the government. Um, <laughs> it's not always the most organized thing in the world. Um, so that was definitely a big piece of resistance coming in and in some, once you're in and it's just the way it is. There's just a lot of moving parts and a lot of people and things can get kind of hairy. Um, so, motivation's been difficult sometimes to sustain while once being in in because it's just kind of a pain at times to be honest. But um, having that motivation prior to commission has definitely played a big role because I've still maintained that and been kept my interest despite the uh, <laughs> ups and downs that have happened. So. Internal motivation has helped me with challenges and conflicts. I think that that is exactly what gets you through those things. Um, so even if I haven't had the best day at work or the best week or anything, then I'm still happy with my overall decision. I'm still happy with what I'm doing. And I know that what I was doing before the military wasn't giving me that like internal purpose. So overall, it's still fulfilling as a career, even if you know, it helps me see the bigger picture when I have those internal motivations. When you're a dually, the only thing, and, and in basic cadet training and dually year, all of that stuff, when you're a dually, the only thing that gets you through challenges and conflicts uh, is, is your, the person to the left and the person to the right of you. Um, I mean, seriously, I mean, that may be super cliche and that may be uh, something that everyone and their mom has heard for as long as time has been, but I mean, it is seriously the people here that get you through um, those challenges. I mean, it, it is literally the, the epitome of this place is the people. Um, there, there, there are no other uh, reasons, really, uh, to go through the academy other than working with and learning from some of the greatest people you will ever meet. Um, because I, I mean, sure, some, some motivations that keep me going forward, right, are, are like, oh, I want to be a pilot. And in order to be a pilot, I've got to do pretty well in my classes, in my class ranking, in my um, piloting tests, in my uh, officer tests, and all, all of these things I need to do well in. Um, and so I, you know, that's a pretty big motivation. I've, you know, I've been wanting to be a pilot for, God, <sighs> 10, 15 years, like pretty much my entire life, honestly. Um, and in order to get there, I, I need to, I need to push myself. Um, and so that's a pretty big, pretty big motivation, but I can always, always without fail, trace something, some sort, some form of, of a, of a motivation um, back to the people always. When you have your off days, someone is having an on day. And those people that have their on days are all over you, trying to help raise you up, bring you up, make you feel better. When you have your on days, you're out trying to help people with their off days. Um, and it's, it's just back and forth and back and forth for your entire time that you're here. And that's, that's really, that's the motivation for me now, um, getting through the academy uh, is, is, is definitely the people. Um, I mean, there are other things, like I said, pilot training, uh, stuff like that. But like, if it's gotten to the point where I need to succeed to make sure that others succeed around me and it's vice versa. So that, that's definitely a big, a 
huge motivation for me, something that helps me get through those challenges. Um, so I haven't really experienced a whole lot of challenges just yet. I'm just a student flight, but just being bored and stuff in there with all the lectures, but we're going to basic pretty soon. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be going through a lot of challenges, but I'll keep all my interior, interior just thoughts and stuff. Joining the ROTC, I didn't, I was just, okay, yeah, I'm going to be a, I didn't, I didn't really know what was in there. And then I joined and getting promoted to command positions, you're kind of faced with challenges that you've never been faced before, faced with before. So that was kind of a, a little bit of a wake up call, like, oh, I kind of got to step up and know my stuff. So it was difficult, but I worked mm -hmm. through uh, was ever a time or experience that made you regret joining the military? Um, sometimes I wondered what I was doing and questioned my sanity, but um, I never regretted uh, being in the military. Less than 1% of the population is in the military, sir. And um, especially now, uh, my last, I don't know, 20 years in, you know, most of the people were a lot younger than me, and it was a, an honor to, to serve with people that came in. And uh, especially if they come in, anybody that came in after 9-11, you know, they came in because of different reasons. And, uh, you know, I just, like I said, it was an honor to serve with those people. Nope. I didn't have a great time at Sear, but, uh, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it was all, it was pretty awful at the time, but uh, really came away with a lot. The takeaways have been so much greater than the putting it in and the time that was, during that time, it was awful, but the takeaway, like I said, has been so much greater and the memories and the lessons learned are pretty valuable, so no, not really, I have not actually had any regrets or anything so far. I wouldn't say that I've experienced like a long-term feeling of regret, but obviously when I miss my family or certain events or holidays, times when I can't go home, um, I have like those fleeting thoughts of like, I wouldn't say regret. I don't know if I can think of a, a right word for it, but obviously I have those moments where, you know, I can't do things that a civilian can do and I can't always make my own decisions and go home and do whatever I want. So would not say regret, but obviously those times you feel the sacrifice more than others. Yeah, so uh, at the end of dual year, there is a, an event, a three-day event known as recognition. Mm -hmm. um, and back in the day, when we went into recognition, uh, I'm going to be frank with you, they, they beat the hell out of us. Um, and by beat, I mean, uh, we did a lot of, a lot of push-ups and sprints and jumping jacks and sit-ups and crunches and planks and squat holds and, and eight count bodybuilders and lunges. I mean, every exercise you could possibly think of, we did it. And they beat the hell out of us for three straight days. And I mean, it got to the point where it was hard to hold a fork out in front of you straight like this. I mean, it was, it was long, tough days. And I remember the first night, the first night of recognition, I uh, it was, we, we sat and we talked for a little bit and we were like, man, this sucks. And I told them, I was like, dude, I don't know if I can do this. This is quite possibly the hardest thing I have ever done. Um, and I, I don't know if I can do this, man. And they were like, dude, you got it. Don't worry about it. Just keep your head up, keep pushing. Day one's done. You're already a third of the way through. We got this. And I was like, yeah, you're right. But I, I've got this doubt, man. I, I don't know. And it was, it was tough. I remember that that first night of recognition, I sat down and I thought, man, I don't know if I can do this. Um, but, you know, my roommates, they were like, hey, just keep pushing. You got it. Just push forward. We'll make it. It'll be fine. Sure enough, next day, hit it hard, hit it fast, kept pushing. And uh, next thing you know, recognition over, got recognized, got my prop and wings. Got to stroll across the Tizo and it was great and it was a good time. So um, yeah, I you know there there have been I I would say there are very few times that I have actually said I regret 
coming here? None so far. Surprisingly, none. Um, I hear stuff from other people from different all across the just the unit that I'm with. So one guy's like, oh, well, I almost lost my position and whatnot because of this over a stupid exam or whatnot. I'm like, oh, boy. But now I'm chilling, quick chilling right now. <laughs> Never really regret. Um, I mean, everything in life you do, you're going to be like, oh, why did I do this? I should have done this. Now there's decisions that I've made in while in the unit that I kind of regret doing, but um, I never regret joining this unit. If you could talk to someone who's being recruited by your branch right now, what would you say to them? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I would um, find out what they want to do and tell them to pursue that. I would ask them why do they want to join the Air Force, and then I would ask them what job do they want. So, and I want to make sure they're joining for the right reasons, but, you know, the caveat that I didn't really know why I was joining except to build the flying hours. So, you know, people can change the reasons why they join. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell them, oh, you only want to join because you want a paying job. Well, maybe you should reconsider, but I may try to sway them to think a different way as far as, hey, you know, you're going to be serving your country and all these other benefits of being in the military. Um, I would say definitely to um, if, if they were looking to join, to really find a specific uh, job that you find interest in and then kind of go from there. Like if you want to be a pilot looking at an airframe you find interest in and choosing to maybe like work in maintenance squadron or something like that just to get a little feel for um, that aspect of it or um, whatever your job may be. But really kind of finding out about it prior to instead of um, just taking whatever and then having that path because it does take one thing I learned it does take a while to cross over <laughs> to change different jobs and to do different things and it's not possible of course but um, I think really researching what you want to do and um, talking to people and finding out exactly what would be a good fit for you beforehand. I would probably tell them not to just use one source of information whether it's the internet or a family member or a recruiter so definitely Use multiple sources for your information, fact check, and do your own research about jobs. And don't just believe everything your recruiter tells you. Make sure you know what you're signing up for. Uh, make sure you know the commitments and the sacrifices that go along with it. And yeah, just get all the information and advice that you can. The first thing uh, that I would say to them is to make sure that they, they work hard um, in, in high school. Uh, the academies, they don't Sometimes it seems like it, but they don't just take anyone. Um, you really do need to put in some effort in high school and show that you're willing to, to work hard uh, because if you uh, approach the academy thinking it's gonna be a normal college all four years, uh, uh, you're wrong. And if you think that uh, you're gonna have weekends where you are throwing ragers and having a good time and going down to, to, the, to the reservoir and screwing around by the beach, having a barbecue and doing that all the time, you're wrong. Um, there are so many duties and responsibilities and um, items of interest that you have to keep in mind. And ultimately you have to keep in mind that the goals of the service academies are to commission, for example, the Air Force Academy, the mission of the Air Force Academy is to commission officers of character. Um, and so you just have to keep in mind that yes, you're going to school. Yes, it's free school. Yes, you're gonna make some great buddies. Yes, you're gonna turn 21 at some point. Yes, you're gonna have parties. Yes, it's gonna be a good time. But that's a very small fraction of the time that you spend here. My point was that you just have to keep in mind that this is this is more than just playtime at the academy. That's, I think that's that's the biggest takeaway for someone who's who's looking at that, at attending. I would say if you really want to do it, uh, it would be a good way to start at least the first half of your life. That's that's another reason why I think of it. I think of it as like a backbone to what I want to do. I'm using this to help me become a better person. Really. I would tell them that if you do join, this will be your second family. Um, 
everyone has each other's backs and you can go to I, I feel comfortable going to anyone in this unit for advice or help and I encourage anyone who is interested in the military or even not interested in the military to join junior ROTC because it will, te it will teach you a lot of life lessons, life experiences, and it's just a wonderful place to be. Do you believe that the motivations to join the military have changed over time? And if so, how do you think time will impact the next generation preparing to join the service? Well, it's definitely changed. I mean, even in the short time I was in, when I first went in, it was a lot of Vietnam veterans. Most of them were, a lot of them were drafted. Um, you know, the draft, that's the last time we, we had to draft anybody. The military's been um, able to man itself with volunteers. So, um, yeah, things have changed incredibly uh, over the last 30, 40 years. Some for the better, some for the worse, but I'd say mostly for the better. I think motiv motivations in general do change. Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but based upon the economy, if jobs are hard to find, people tend to flock towards the military because, hey, it's a job, it's, you know, hopefully I can pass the physical portion of it, but uh, if I can get in medically wise, it's a guaranteed job. So I, I think the motivations do change. Uh, right after September 11th, uh, 2001, after the terrorist attacks, the motivation to join the military wasn't for economic reasons, it was because they had a sense of patriotic duty, and they wanted to go and be a part of the military so they can go you know, fight the bad guys that did what they did to our country. So motivations, they're gonna change over time. You know, and sometimes they flip flop. You know, now I think people are joining the military maybe because of economic reasons, which is perfectly fine. But it may change again where people want to join because you know they want to uh, protect the freedoms we have here in the United States. Hmm. Um, I think from what I've seen, there seems to be a little less like sense of patriotism, and um, I don't. I think it's just the culture has changed. Um, for sure. <laughs> um, so things have kind of diminished. Um, somehow America's almost made to be, you know, having pride in your country is somehow looked at as a fault or, you know, it doesn't have the same meaning behind it that it did before. Um, so I think that's definitely changed a lot. Um, I'm hoping that changes. Um, really hope it changes. It hasn't, you know, affected me being in, but as far as um, people coming up, you know, growing up, I've I really do hope it changes. Um, I think if culture progresses like it is now, I don't see it changing much, but um, really, really do hope that there's some sort of like reignition and reigniting of patriotism and sense of, you know, ownership in your community and wanting to be a part of something strong, greater. I hope that continues <laughs> on. We'll see. I don't think that time would necessarily change it. I think that there's always going to be a group of people who join because it's a family tradition and there's always going to be a group of people who join for the benefits. They want to just get the free college or there's always going to be that group of people that just want to serve their country. Sometimes it's a combination of different reasons such as those, but I think that there's always going to be those certain reasons or motivations for joining. I don't know if time plays a role in those categories, I think they're always going to exist. For sure. I, I think a lot of people join for a lot of different reasons, but I think in the end, after a while, it boils down to the people. Um, that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why people stay in the military. Um, because I mean, as a pilot, right, I make so much money at, at, in the future. I would make an X amount of money per month or per year or whatever, uh, flying F-16s, let's say. Um, that's great and all, but the airlines offer X amount of money plus an extra 20,000 per month. And I can make a bank over at the airlines. But it's, it's all about whether or not those people um, that see those opportunities, uh, they weigh those against the losses they'll, they'll incur by leaving the people that they, they currently work with. So for example, um, if you are in a fighter squadron and you, some of your best friends are in that fighter squadron, you've experienced loss, you've worked hard with these people, you've played hard with these people for 
X amount of years and all of a sudden a, a slot opens up at United for an extra 20 grand a year or a month or whatever. Um, it, it, I, I think that in the long run, me personally, um, I would, I would probably stick uh, with my squadron over going, going to the airlines. Um, and that's, that's just me. But I, I definitely think that, that over time, uh, people start to appreciate and learn the value of the people around them. Um, and that's, that's one, one of the biggest things that's being pushed out uh, for, that, for, for us here that we hear all the time is uh, people first. And, and that's not like being pushed out recently. That's a thing that's been around for a while. Um, but people first is definitely uh, the, the mindset that a lot of us are being taught and the mindset that we have going into uh, the, the Air Force. And so uh, people first and people in general, that, that is definitely the reason why um, a lot of us here at this academy uh, stay. And, and that's, that's what our motivation switches to is, is for those people, working for those people, um, being with those people, hanging out with those people. Those are the motivations, the reasons why we stay. Um, but I mean, there are any number of reasons why people would want to stay in the military. Um, if they really just love their job that much, if they, if they uh, enjoy travel and the military is the only way they get to do that. I mean, there are all sorts of reasons uh, people would want to, to stay in the military. Uh, but I, I can for sure tell you that one of the biggest has got to be people. And um, I think I, I speak for most of the people in my class and most of the people here when I say that that's in general the, the most important reason to uh, stay. I feel like time uh, for, like, I mean, different times have their different motivations. I know the people around the 9-11, as soon as that event happened, that's what caused them to do this. My reason was just because I wanted to better myself. I wanted to just, you know, join. I guess. So I, maybe throughout time, people will less want to join or more want to join. It really just depends on what's going on in the world. I feel like time has because, or time has had an impact on it because back then there was a lot of a lot of different things going on in the world that encouraged some people to join. Maybe it was a war going on at that time or I know a lot of people, the reason my dad joined was because of 9 11. Um, but now there's really not a certain world, I don't know how to say it, going on right now. So I feel like now it's just. Oh, I want to join the military to do this or do that. Not really just one situation. As you can see, the answers between these different age groups stayed relatively similar. Internal motivation is more effective when helping service members through difficult times, as well as retaining their motivation. Although these service members will serve, are serving, or have served our country, they share the same mindset and different motivations based on their conflicts faced in the military. Thank you for your time.